Um, it's exactly volume, no other term. This constant is a, this term actually is a one. And then any local perturbation product states only change this uh, exactly volume part, do not change this part. So this is the motivation that why the, the volume independent part should be universal. So therefore there is a, uh, so therefore there is a, there is a something like a topological entanglement entropy that the, the topology part of part volume independent, independent part of partition function is universal. And this is better than topology entanglement entropy because this, this volume independent part is a function of a topology of a space time. They map different topology of space time to a, to a number. And a such function should completely characterize topology order. It's not like topological entanglement entropy, which only partially characterizes topology order. But this one, this function, should completely characterize topology order. So, so actually, this, uh, that's why I introduced uh, all this topology order, because uh, uh, in these uh, uh, two lectures, this uh, topological partition function will play a very important role uh, to understand uh, SPD states and also topology order states. And uh, so uh, if a space time is uh, like uh, SD times S1, then this partition function must be identity, topological function must be identity. And, uh, but certainly, it don't have to be. If this function is not identity, that means a symmetry breaking. Actually, so this is a, this function's identity means uh, there is no symmetry breaking, and you only have a pure topology order. And uh, then on this, if a space time have this kind of geometry, if a space is S1 times uh, SD minus one, uh, if this is a space, then this partition function is uh, always an uh, integer. I don't know why it's always integer, but somehow it's always integer. And this integer happens to be to the number of a topological particle type. And uh, so actually, uh, if a dimension is space dimension two, that's the S1 times S1 is torus. You know that the ground dimension of torus is the number of a quasi particle type. So this is a generalization to higher dimension. But uh, certainly, if you choose different topology, then, then, the, then the topological, say, string type, topological membrane type may appear. And so that's maybe, uh, uh, you, may, you, may, you may measure that. Yes? So, so doesn't the interaction for three-dimensional spheres kind of manifold, space yeah. manifold, uh, for three-dimensional topological order is always have no topological guarantee? No, yeah. This is almost like accent. It's a very important accent in, in topological quantum field theory. So, the, so topological order on a sphere always have a unique ground states. If such ground states are not unique, it's always coming from the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, GL, that's what is the GLZ uh, type of entanglement. So that means symmetry breaking type of ground states. So that means intuitive on the side. Why, why, why the passion between arbitrary? I mean, in two dimensions, I can do that. Yeah, in any dimension, uh, whether there's any symmetry. I don't know. Uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, why? <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's maybe I I I I really don't know. This is a this should be very very important uh, point. And uh, um, as like a team, you know, have this uh, uh, uh have this uh, some kind of a bond uh, related in terms of the entropy with the DJ ground state designer state. And I think uh, uh, if you make some, some assumption that the top lot, the, the, the income entropy have certain kind of uh, additive property, and the one probably can, can show this. And, uh, um, you could also show that you could reconstruct the global ground state from local data. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So there's no like loops to get? Yeah, there's no loop. This is, there's a called a locally definable. I mean, there's a, uh, somehow, if you know the local data, you try to glue them together uh, on the sphere, yeah. Seems on the sphere, you can, you can, you can do that. And, uh, uh, but I, I really don't have a, 
something kind of rigorous, but, but uh, some, some, something along that line. So this uh, bound from entangled entropy also, also belongs to that. Uh, when you assume entangled entropy have certain properties, that's really uh, tell you how you glue them together, how you glue two regions together. And uh, when they start to certain property, then you can show that uh, on the sphere we glue them together, uh, the degeneracy should always be equal to one. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, so so therefore the topological particular function and the geometry space actually the same type of topological environment. They're very closely related. Uh, so uh, so this uh, this so here we will, this will play a very important role. Yeah. So when you say a symmetry gradient, you say the symmetry is a space-time symmetry? Or what is no, talking, I, I really mean internal symmetry. Oh. But uh, translated symmetry may also be, but here we usually I talk, talk about the space with arbitrary topology, so translated symmetry is a little bit difficult to, to see. Okay, so. So certainly we can go beyond this uh, uh, mapping torus. You know, we can consider space-time is arbitrary topology. You know, you know, in, in last transparency, we assume space-time is very bound over, over S1. But certainly we can go beyond that. We can consider space-time is arbitrary topology. And then we, we still have this, uh, that's the, uh, there's a volume independent part of a partition function which is called topological, and there's a volume part. And uh, I have to say this really, uh, this is not even a conjecture, <laughs> because uh, the mathematics of this statement is not well defined. Because uh, uh, when the space time have a have a complicated curvature and such, such that it's a so called volume of space time is a little bit hard to define. So we have some trouble to precisely define the volume of space time. So this statement is not pure, not totally well defined, but. We feel that this idea is very important. We, we should be able to make such separation. And uh, so certainly if this, uh, but this uh, topological partition function is really mapped from different topology of space time to a, to a non-zero complex number. If this map is a constant map to the one, that's a trivial phase. And then certainly a non-trivial topology order would give rise to some kind of non-trivial map. And that's this kind of non-trivial topology environment from a mathematical point of view. And so this led to another conjecture is that uh, uh, the topology environment uh, classify uh, this, uh, uh, this gap of the face. So mathematician study the topology environment of manifold, you know, for a long, long time. So, so for each topology environment defined by mathematicians, which really means uh, they, they find some kind of function, this map from topology to a number. And here we claim that if a mathematician finds such topology environments, then that means they correspond to a, in condensed matter, correspond to a topological order. And vice versa, is that uh, uh, every topology order corresponds to a topology environments and corresponds to all the topology environments. So we try to say that the topology order classify all the possible topological environments of a manifold. But again, this is not even a conjecture <laughs> because uh, there's a lot of qualifier. Uh, you know, what do you mean by topological environment? Actually, uh, the topological environment I used here have a more narrow definition than my mathematician. Uh, they have certain locality requirement, etc. But, uh, uh, but again, this is like idea is that uh, if you go along this, uh, this direction, you may develop a mathematical theory. There's some kind of nice topology environments of the space-time manifold, which classify topologies. And then there is a, uh, in kind of matter, we have a topological order of the phase. And this topological order of phase and the so-called local topology environments should be one-to-one -one correspond to each other and class by each other. So this is some kind of a conjecture, but it's kind of interesting direction uh, to push forward. And uh, uh, so, 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 so here we, we, we make a connection uh, between this uh, 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 condensed matter physics study different uh, uh, quantum state of matter and the mathematics, uh, uh, in particular with the algebraic topology, which try to classify uh, different uh, space uh, space time manifold, and these two became almost the same uh, same problem. Yes. So 
So there are these topological theories like topology twisted gauge theories. Yeah. Which have seemingly contradictory like not you know, answers for manifolds that don't make sense from quantum mechanics, like it can't be the number of states like time is one self or something like that. Or like space time does one. I'm confused. I think the twist gauge theory you mean the, this type of algorithm type of gauge no, no, theory? I mean, it's more complicated thing when you take a supersymmetric gauge theory. A oh, supersymmetric gauge theory. Take, you know, one of the oh, yeah. And mix it with the yeah. So, so that's, that's what we're working by the local. And there's, a, there's a one class of topology invariants controlled by using supersymmetric uh, theory. And uh, uh, if I translate that into the condensed matter uh, physics, this kind of supersymmetric uh, topological theory only considers so-called zero energy sector of the theory, but the but the theory may not be gapped. So there's a, there are gapless there are gapless theory, but the zero energy sector is very special, and this zero energy sector can be in some sense topological, but this kind of topological uh, theory, uh, I think their topology invariants are not local, and uh, uh, but. Uh, but uh, it's also very nice, because this kind of topological variance probably is a way to study gapless theory. So using this, uh, usually those topological variance will correspond to something topological field theory that are non-unitary non or non-rational or something like that. So, uh, so actually, that's a point in another direction. Study this non-unitary, non-rational topological quantum field theory or non-local topological variance actually probably is a one way to study gapless theory. And uh, that's to that, but, but that represents totally different direction. And uh, but however, here uh, uh, what we studied here is a, a gap theory with shortening correlation. And uh, so they have a, a sub subclass of a topological one which is kind of local and nice, unitary. And uh, so those those things, those topological one would correspond to the topology order. Yeah. It would be really really nice that if a non-unitary Topology environments classify gapless theory. That's be, that's even bigger uh, progress. You know, uh, that's much more important than the manage the topological order. Uh, the, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can just make this declaration. <laughs> okay, and uh, so you know, so far we just describe a topological order by measurement. But the measurement we described actually is a numerical measurement. So if you pay attention, it's that uh, all the properties are described can be implemented in a computer, like a pass integral, uh, like a ground state degeneracy, like a non-abelian geometric phase. In principle, when you have a big enough computer, you can compute those numbers in a computer. So I, ca I say those are they are still measurement, but kind of numerical uh, measurement. And uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of uh, uh, qualified, you know, what I try to say is that uh, the concept of topology order or notion of topology order are defined by experiments, including numerical experiments. So this is very much like uh, the definition of a notion of superconductivity. You know, what is a superconductivity? The definition of superconductivity it's actually it's a numerical of ex real experiments. <laughs> like if you measure the uh, the viscosity, or if you measure the vorticity, you find the vortex are qu vortices are quantized, viscosity equal to zero. So those are experimental definition of a, a superfluidity or superconductivity. And then the, when you have this experimental definition of a phenomena, so next question will be the mechanism. What is a, a microsco microscopic uh, a reason for such phenomena? For example, you may ask, what is a microscopic reason uh, for zero viscosity, uh, for the quantization of autistic? Why we have that? Now we understand that the microscopic reason for superfluidity is a condensation of a boson or a pair of electrons. So here we have a similar thing. What is the microscopic uh, reason uh, for the for the topologic order? And uh, it turns out that the microscopic reason for this uh, a robust ground state and for this uh, 
uh, uh, robust non geometric phase, all the phenomena we just described actually is a, a, it's a quantum entanglement. And uh, so, so here, uh, so we will describe uh, some, uh, some very brief introduction for quantum entanglement. And certainly, we have a up and down with a, this is called a product state. They are not uh, entangled. They are so. And uh, uh, certainly, uh, we have a up and down plus down up. You know, this kind of superposition of two different product states. This is called uh, entangled. And when we get the more entangled states, we can have uh, this uh, up, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. You know, all add up. Seems we get something even more entangled state. Uh, but but the problem is that when you are when too greedy, you don't get anything. So this is a, uh, uh, this is a, actually this is an unentangled because you can have a, a different uh, 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 you know um, you have up plus down times up plus down. Actually, it's unentangled both in x direction. Okay, and uh, so uh, so then in kinetic physics. We usually study unentangled states. For example, like this anti-ferromagnetic state, up and down, up and down, up and down, etc. So these are really unentangled states. And uh, and we also study entangled states. For example, this dimer, these dimer states, like uh, this is dimer, which is a superposition of an up and down minus down up. This spin singular. So so these states are entangled states. But however, such states are short ring entangled states. Because if you define your site to be, if you group these two sites into one effective site, then on this one effective site, they are product state. They just product state of singlet. So this is a notion. So this gives us some some intuition. You know, those are, are those are short ring entanglement states. And the short ring entanglement state and the entanglement state are roughly the same. You know, they they, they they don't differ too much from long distance point of view. Okay, and. Uh, so the crystal is also an entangled state because uh, the crystal can be written in the following way. In some space point, we have no particle. In some other space point, we have one particle. So the product states of a no particle, one particle give us crystal. OK. The superfluid is, a, is an entangled state because they are superposition of all possible configuration of uh, particles. So they are entangled. But however, but actually they are not entangled. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we do too much. We sum over all possible configurations. So actually, this uh, superfluid can be viewed as a part state of a particular state, which is a 0 plus 1 plus 2, etc. for each spatial point. Then the product, this is called a theta state. The pure product state of a theta states give us superfluid. So actually, this is a, you know, superfluid is our, our, our canonical example of a quantum states. But actually, no, superfluid is classical. There are no, no, not quantum states. So in kinetic physics, you may ask you, do we, we have we, we have a many body theory as a whole course. But do we study any quantum states? The answer is no. Except for me liquid is quantum states. <laughs> and, uh, so, so actually in kinetic matter, we study a lot of phase, like a different symmetry breaking phase. Actually, they are all unentangled. So they are not really, not, not really quantum. So, so really quantum states is a lot. There's no way to choose a basis for this kind of classical picture. And, uh, and we, we it also we are no way to group a lattice to have this product classical picture. So, so so this so those topology order is correspond to some kind of entanglement which is not not of those type <laughs> something beyond those type and something beyond those type is so called a long ring entangled because those are either unentangled or short ring entangled. The topology order is uh, not not these kind of states, but there are some other kind of state beyond those states, and this state is called a long range entangled state. And uh, so to have a uh, to have an example of long range entangled states, and uh, so uh, we can have this. Uh, uh, we can consider the super. Let's start with the superfluid states. <coughs> if you say superfluid states is a 
a superposition of all particle configuration. And that means the wave function is a constant. You know, for every particle configuration described by the position z1 to zn, the amplitude is just all equal to 1. So that means that all the configuration have equal amplitude have equal weights. The superposition of all these configurations as a superfluid. So superfluid corresponds to this constant wave function. Then how to make a superfluid states, which is unentangled, how to make superfluid lumbering entangled? And one way to do that is a so-called scrambling the phase. Instead of have a constant phase, we have some other phase. So one way to scramble the phase is to make a wave function have this, uh, this kind of choice of phase. Zi minus Zj raised to C, third order. Or second order, whatever. So, uh, so, so this kind of, uh, uh, so we can, we can call this kind of a phase, choice of phase as uh, describing some kind of dancing. You know, quantum fluctuation kind of like a, like a dancing pattern. Uh, like a superconductor is like a waltz. Uh, but, uh, but the quantum houses are more modern dance. So everybody dance with everybody else. And the buts, they, they follow some dancing rules that correspond to this order. And uh, first, uh, every electron just uh, dance around the clockwise. So that means the wave function only depends on this polymorphic uh, combination of x and y. And uh, then they, each electron only takes exactly three, three steps to go around another electron. And so this is a, a phase of a six pi when the when the z i go on the z j. So so once you have these uh, two rules, you totally fix the wave function. So that's uh, this and this kind of a uh, rule describe a particular dancing pattern. And this turns out to be this kind of a wave function have a long range entanglement. You know they cannot be written as any product states. Okay. So more generally. We can describe a dancing pattern using a matrix, K matrix. Uh, we can have, uh, say, uh, many layers. We have, uh, say, uh, some uh, K layer of the quantum power states. And each layer is described by this Z with a capital subscript I or ZJ. That's diff it's a big I, big J, describe different layer. And then when the, when the electron in the same layer go on each other, uh, their dancing pattern is a KII, that's a dancing step. When the electron from I layer go around the J layer, there's a the dancing step is KIJ, you know, things like that. So you can use this uh, matrix, integer matrix, to describe these uh, dancing steps. And it turns out that uh, 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 this kind of wave function also long range entangled. It even have a, a low under effective theory, which is a U1 transformation theory, also describe uh, this thing, K matrix. And uh, and uh, so there is a uh, there is a no, uh, belief or uh, uh, conjecture is that uh, uh, all the all the abelian topological order are fully classified by this uh, k matrix. So this kind of construction using this uh, uh, dancing in different layers, we can obtain all the uh, two parts one dimensional abelian topological order. But the correspondence is not one to one. So that means that diff sometimes different matrices may correspond the same topological order. But every topological order, every abelian topological order can be described by some k matrix. So that is kind of a uh, statement. And these kind of states uh, will, uh, will, will appear. We will decide this kind of state a little bit later. So this basically is, a, uh, is some kind of, a, uh, this is, this is a one example of a, of a topological order, uh, a long range entanglement. So this kind of wave function, or this kind of, uh, uh, this is called a Harpin wave function, uh, uh, have this uh, a long green entanglement. But the mathematically, how to define long green entanglement? And the mathematically, uh, to, to define long green entanglement, uh, we can use this uh, local unitary uh, transformation, which we discussed e uh, yesterday. So basically, we know the product states is, uh, is uh, unentangled, certainly not long green entangled. Then we can use so-called local unitary transformation, which is described by this kind of picture. That is, uh, uh, so each box corresponds to unit transformation acting a few qubits, a, a few nearby qubits. So we will we'll try to we'll act the unit transformation on a few nearby qubits. You can entangle them. So therefore, starting with a state which is not entangled, we will apply this unit transformation described by this uh, box. You get entangled states. But entanglement only among those uh, 
those are qubits which are mixed by each box. Since each box has found a side, so this is a short ring entangle. So when you add this uh, uh, scrambling, you only scramble them locally, so that's a short ring entangle. Certainly you can have a few fine layer of this kind of scrambling, which may have different overlap. But uh, after those uh, a few layer of uh, long unity transformation, you still get some kind of short ring entangle. So, so the short ring entangle states basically is a state which are connect to product states by local unitary transformation. That is definition of short ring entangle state. And the topological order is a realization that uh, this kind of uh, states produced from product states is not all the possible states. You know, if every many body states are of this type, then everything is short entangled, then there will be no topological order. Topology order says that there are many body states which can never be written in this form. And this states are called a long ring entangled states. So long ring entangled states basically is a state which cannot be connected to product state via this local unitary transformation. So that is a uh, so such state exists. So that's a, so this that that's really the definition of a long ring entangled state. And this this kind of picture have a have a, a condensed matter consequence is that uh, all the short ring entangled states are connected because uh, uh, because short ring connect states short ring entangled states are connected by local unitary via local unitary to the product states, but every product states are connected to every other product states by by local rotation. So 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 therefore every short ring entangled states. I connect to every other short ring entangled states by this local unitary. But the local unitary corresponds to this uh, the equivalence class of a wave function which belongs to the same phase. If two wave functions are connected by local unitary, they are very similar. They say they belong to the same quantum phase. So therefore, all the short ring entangled states belong to the same phase. But however, long ring entangled states may not belong to the same phase. So long ring entangled states do not connect to short ring entangled states but they may not connect to each other. So you, you may have a different long ring entangled states which do not connect it to each other uh, by this local unitary. So therefore, there is different uh, phase of long ring entangled states. And this is nothing but topology order. Actually, topology order is this uh, long ring entangled states which do not connect to each other by this local unitary. So this is really uh, to provide the quantum entanglement definition of a topology order. And so this is, a, I think this is a better a definition of topology order. But you know, in 1989, you know, when we when we studied topology order, the quantum entanglement is not a popular name because of that is before the quantum uh, computing uh, time. So, uh, so, so now we kind of an, an hour into this. So that's probably is uh, introduction, and uh, and. Uh, so now we go to this uh, the, uh, the the appetizer of, of my lecture. So I'm still <laughs> to the topology order. So but but here we try to ask ask me to how to class the topology order because uh, because uh, you can see the topology order is a is an equivalence class defined by this local unit, unit transformation. So we have a mathematical definition of topology order. So next question is asked, after you define that, can you classify them? Can you have a theory uh, for them, for all these topology orders? So this, uh, this is the question. And to classify topology order is uh, a very difficult. But actually, it's, uh, it's probably doable. I, I'm thinking maybe next 10 years, we, we, should, uh, we should be able to do that, or uh, maybe even the next five years. So I have a question about this uh, uh, distribution of uh, long range and short range entangle. Yeah. So uh, I remember for the treatment of side phase, they, they couple this uh, Lahinger uh, liquid for different wires and they can construct long range or some, some fractional from whole states. But it, it occurs to me that the way they couple, it looks like some kind of local couple. But uh, I, I but I, I understand that uh, in that approach you cannot know the wave function. You probably they, they try to construct the edge space. But I, I don't know if uh, there are some. Yeah, it just it just occurs to me that uh, the approach looks like uh, even for cook out the fractional quantum space, the operation is also local in a sense.